state of Texas, DSHS has informed public health departments that they are they have adopted a revised definition for COVID-19 probable cases. So for confirmed case, it stays the same. You still just need PCR. But now they've added a probable case definition. Uh, so that still gets counted towards the case count. It's different. It's not confirmed. It's probable, but it's still a case. So at the end of this definition, there are 15 different options on how you could be classified as a probable case. Based on this diagram and what they report, there's a total of 17 cases now. One is still only confirmed because that was that original index case who then had all these contacts underneath in orange. And all the rest of them became probable but they are still considered a case. It has the potential to be a very significant event for us here in Texas and here in Collin County as the state now has, has elected to adopt this new probable definition. If you have a subjective fever and you have a headache and you live in Collin County, you now meet the qualifications to be a probable COVID patient. It is remarkable how low the standard is now. Uh-huh. If you have one of the major Um, symptoms you have a cough or you have shortness of breath and you live in Collin County then you can satisfy the definition for a probable COVID case but but I'm very concerned that we absolutely could see the numbers jump uh, very rapidly in a way that actually is not indicative of what we're seeing here in the community in the public health department the clips you just saw took place on May 18th of this year just a few weeks ago Now, we were contacted by a whistleblower inside the state health department at a high level a few weeks ago about the big changes that were coming. Separately, another whistleblower contacted us with the video you just saw and more we're about to play. But this is complete proof that the COVID-19 testing regime and the definitions they semantically use from the NIH and CDC are frauds. This has been confirmed. If one person tests positive for COVID-19, 15 people in the computer model are then said to have it. So possibles are now defined as of the middle of May as COVID cases. But it gets worse. They go on to say that they're going to say it's COVID-19 even if someone's not been tested. And if someone dies without test, they're going to say it's COVID-19. And let's say the virus called you to go to the ICU and then have a heart or kidney problem. Some countries are recording that as a heart issue or a kidney issue and not a COVID-19 death. Um, right now, we're still recording it. And we all, I mean, the great thing about having forms that come in and a form that has the ability to mark it as COVID-19 infection, the intent is right now that those, if someone dies with COVID-19, we are counting that as a COVID-19 death. But this is bigger than that. This is the NIH directing the states to say that if one person tests positive in a questionable test, that 15 others are positive as well. So we're going to go through these clips. We're going to link to where you can see hours of this at the end of the video for yourself because we don't just have the documents from the state health department. We actually have a county going over this last month and breaking it down and asking the question, this is going to create a lot of new false cases. Rob News, the Infowars News Director, he's been following this for weeks. We're ready to break this right now. Yeah, and that prophetic statement was made by Chris Hill, the county judge. Basically, he said, wow, with all these new parameters we're using to create COVID cases, they're using the word case very specifically, that we can have these inflated numbers. So it used to be if you tested positive for COVID-19, that was one case. Now, if you have one case, They also look around it and see who you've been in contact with. They say, okay, these are probable cases. These go into the caseload. And they use a lot of different parameters that we're going to go over uh, just in in one second. But one case could equal 17 cases, could equal 10 cases, could equal 20 cases. It doesn't matter. All it looks at is the word probable. And they add probable into the caseload. And now you've seen since May 18th, when these were implemented in Texas, the numbers skyrocketing.
And they confirm that if they say probable, that's now called a case. It's a called so a case. So this is lawyer semantics. We've confirmed other states are following this same directive. So they can turn the cases up or turn them down. The bureaucrats can whenever they want. That's right. So let's go into these clips. We have clip one. This is where they talk about the case definitions being revised. And here it is. State of Texas, DSHS has informed public health departments that they are they have adopted a revised definition for COVID-19 probable cases. Probable case definition was adopted by the Council of State and Territorial Epidemiologists back in early April, April 4th or 5th. They adopted this. They sent it to the CDC, and the CDC did take that recommendation and adopt it and sent it out to the various states. Now we're going to look at the new case definitions. So this adds confirmed cases with probable cases. Here it is. So for confirmed case, it stays the same. You still just need PCR. But now they've added a probable case definition. Uh, So that still gets counted towards the case count. It's different. It's not confirmed. It's probable, but it's still a case. Meaning if you use another testing method, not PCR, and if you have close contact with a confirmed or probable case. And if you did that lab work that was not a PCR, you could be considered a case with or without um, symptoms. Probable plus confirmed equals case, and they admit the two are added together in the guidelines put out by the feds. And let's remember, Dr. Ron Paul has come out today and said, this is a hoax. They're counting people that aren't positive with false tests, but it's beyond that. They then use the false test to say, on average, 15 extra people have it. And then Elon Musk, who's a major engineer, major league dialed in, he's come out and said it's all a giant hoax using false testing, but it's beyond that. They then use the models to claim probable cases, which again, the state of Texas then passed a law agreeing with the federal regulations a few weeks ago, saying that a probable case is a case. Exactly, exactly. And now, here's an aside on this too. The new death requirements... You don't even have to be tested. You could be dead. If you haven't been tested for COVID, you could still have been around somebody with COVID, be a probable case, and be counted as a COVID death. Here's that clip. They also updated the definition for deaths related to COVID-19. Previously, prior to this definition, it was only if you had a positive PCR result that you would be counted as someone who died related to COVID-19. Now that lab testing is no longer required to be counted towards that. All right, now we're going to go to Aisha. She's the health department worker who works in epidemiology. This is about two minutes, and she goes into how we have a confirmed case, but here are these other things that we can add to it that make probable cases. So basically, if you sneeze and live in Collin County, you could be considered a probable case under these new guidelines. Here it is. So if you do the FDA-approved testing, which right now is serology, looking for antibodies, IgG, IgM, you have to have the clinical criteria. And if you don't have that, and then you have the epi link, then you could still be counted as a case. So if we look at the yellow box here, that's the approved testing, right? If yellow, you have the test, and then you have any of the blue, you're a probable case. If you're yellow, and you have any other close contact, which doesn't mean you're sick, you're a probable case. And then if you're out, if you don't do any of that lab work and then you get sick and you were a contact of a case, you are then counted as a probable case. You have to be a close contact of someone who's a confirmed case of COVID-19 or a probable case, or you came to a location where it's endemic. Right now, Texas has stated that they are considering the state as an endemic area. So that means if I just went and got serology testing done with no symptoms and I was positive, whether it's saying that recent infection or current infection, my new antibodies, or it's like I've had them for a while, I would be counted as a probable case. Um, so basically this, these three boxes, you can be yellow and blue without green to be counted as probable, yellow and green without the blue, and then blue and green without the yellow. But for the blue and green, if you had contact, that has to be within 14 days. So let's say activity dies down, slows down, and we're not considered endemic, then we need that 14 day. But right now that 14 day doesn't matter. Moving forward, it may. 
when activity slows down. So at the end of this definition, there are 15 different options on how you could be classified as a probable case. So that same scenario, a little bit more extended. Um, now if we look at it with the new probable case definition, where some individuals had the FDA approved testing of IgM, IgG, some individuals just had contact with someone who is classified as a COVID case, whether they are confirmed or probable. So at the end of this, based on this diagram and what they report, there's a total of 17 cases now. One is still only confirmed because that was that original index case who then had all these contacts underneath in orange. And all the rest of them became probable, but they are still considered a case. I've been on air 26 years, and this story has me shaking. Because we already knew they were putting out fraudulent numbers and fake tests and taking people that had died of car wrecks and gunshot wounds and the flu and pneumonia, putting them in the COVID column. That's confirmed. But to have whistleblowers of the state of Texas tell us this weeks ago and now be sent this video where the county is implementing this is just staggering. I mean, we have caught them red-handed in massive fraud, but they believe because it's bureaucratic, because it's scientific, because it's mathematic, that they, the bureaucrats, can hide behind what they've done in this massive power grab. We've got more clips, Rob. That's right. This is Chris Hill, the county judge, where he's going to kind of recap everything for you, show you his process of learning this information in real time, and then going, you know what? This is going to be ripe for increased numbers. I don't know if this is really a good idea, but they've already voted on it. They've already put it into place. It's like you can't stop this runaway train. So here it is. It has the potential to be a very significant event for us here in Texas and here in Collin County as the state now has, has elected to adopt this new probable definition. If you'll go back one, Mr. Bilyeu, as it's displayed there on the chart there, the yellow box, the blue boxes, and the green boxes. If you have any two of those three colors, then, then you will meet the definition of probable. If you have a subjective fever and you have a headache and you live in Collin County, you now meet the qualifications to be a probable COVID patient. It is remarkable how low the standard is now. If you have one of the major um, symptoms, you have a cough or you have shortness of breath and you live in Collin County, then you can satisfy the definition for a probable COVID case. But I'm very concerned that we absolutely could see the numbers jump uh, very rapidly in a way that actually is not indicative of what we're seeing here in the community in the public health department. The probable case numbers are about to about to shoot up and uh, folks are going to see the curves uh, and the, the trend lines are going to change and they're going to have lots of questions. And But despite our best efforts, it will be very hard to get in front of this story. This COVID-19 hoax is killing our economy. It's collapsing the world economy and starving millions to death. It's being used to bring in a medical tyranny with Bill Gates, forced inoculations, contact tracers, apps on our phones. I mean, this is really Big Brother's takeover moment. But I was just thinking, Rob, what should we do? Viewers shouldn't just believe us. They should go check this out with themselves and they should reach out to their counties and their cities and get these documents and show how it's happening in your area because we know it is and, and and make a big deal about this because if we expose this, this whole thing is going down. Exactly. Here's the key words, case and probable case. And what the counties are doing, especially here in Texas, is taking probable cases and cases, merging them into one number, calling them cases. And that's it. And that's how they're inflating these numbers. And that's why we're getting these gross inflated numbers. And it's the only way. I mean, it's, it's basic science. Add it up. And this is the smoking gun. They admit the state of Texas has been directed by the feds, who are directed by the U.N., to say that probable cases are cases. They say it over and over again. It's in the slide. It's in the documents. And that's why, as soon as this gets implemented two weeks ago, the number goes straight up. Yeah. That's the setup. So... We'll be covering this more on the syndicated radio TV show tomorrow. But please, ladies and gentlemen, realize they are censoring medical doctors, scientists, you name it, all over the place that are exposing that the hospitals were empty, that they were shipping people with COVID into nursing homes, uh, that, that the tests are doing false positives. But just like Elon Musk and just like Dr. Ron Paul and others, we can override their system. And this is posted to Band on Video. We're... At least for now, they can't shut us down and censor us so you can share this vital information. The bottom line is they're counting through pure fraud 
an additional 15 people on average with a computer model if one person comes up positive. That's how they have numbers of 80 plus people who are uh, found to be COVID-19 positive at one bar. They get a few people there who test positive, they claim everyone is. Or they said the day after Trump's rally in Tulsa that it was record numbers. It takes 14 days to incubate. All of it's just made up crap. It's all fraud. But it's our fault if we don't stand up to this fraud and expose it for what happens to us next.